What's going on guys? Stalker back again. Hope you're fantastic today and welcome to a game called Dial Town. Now this game was made by the same person who made Day Shift at Freddy's, Direct Doggo, okay? And I really enjoyed Day Shift at Freddy's and Doggo messaged me a while back asking me to play this game. It's not really a game that I'd play on the channel. Okay, I'll be honest, uh, but Doggo is a great friend and I feel like I owe him one for the day shift at Freddy's games and the series that I did on the channel um, and he really, really wanted me to play it and he needs help promoting the game. I want to do that, okay? So I think this game has swearing in and stuff like that, so just a warning. I'll probably filter it out anyway, but just a warning first so you're like, oh my god, Doggo swore! I'm doing this more for friendship. As well as experiencing his game, okay. This I've never, I, I've never seen any videos on it or anything, uh, so this is a first-time experience going straight into it. So yeah, let's go, guys. Uh, link in the description if you want to check it out and you think it looks cool. Let's go with new game. So similar play style to Day Shift at Freddy's story, uh, story like interactive uh, conversations. Arrow keys to move the cursor. Enter left mouse to select, escape to go back, full screen, bring up conversation log, skip dialogue, dialogue, okay. Hello. Oh, hello, doggo. Hello. Welcome to the dial town, phone dating sim demo. You must now answer this hound's question free. What? Um, all right, let's do it. All right, now, if you'd shut up, I can ask you what your name is. Not nice. I am sh There we go. Oh, right. Anywho, what's your name? My name is Phone... What? Can I just get rid of all that? Oh, okay. Dorco. There we go. Hola, Dorkmeister. Hey, dog, how you been? Well, the divorce has been hard on me, but otherwise I'm not dead yet. Good stuff, good stuff. Anywho, second question. Uh, are you a phone or a typewriter? I mean, I'm a phone. I've got to go with phone because a phone guy. Uh, but this is, these are like very disturbing phones and typewriters, guys. If you look closely, it looks like they're made out of skin. <laughs> We'll go with phone. Aha, nice. Enjoy having telemarketers living in your head. Um. Now, well, I'd rather be a phone than a dog. My greatest burden is remembering where I've buried my old breadsticks at any given time. Please reevaluate your life choices, thusly. Now, final question. Um. What's your gender then, mate? Male, female, or both? Uh, I'm male. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, enjoy having the inmate ability to open pickle jars, I guess. I like how he's got male, female, and, you know, other pronouns. That's good. I like that. Gotta, gotta have that more in games. Uh, thanks, Daddy Doggo. Can I just play the game now? I'm not calling you that. I don't know, can you? <laughs> D. All right then, get out of my sight. Yay. So you get to play the game now. Oh, hello. Ooh. Hmm. Seems I'm alive again. That's what I always say when I wake up. Oh. Darn. I hate it when I do that. Okay. Hmm. Must be getting ready to hatch. The time for reproduction is now. I must find a dark, dank pit to lay my eggs in. Fairgrounds. 
Fairground is dark, dank and greasy. Plentiful supply of carnival food nearby. Yes. Guys, what the hell am I playing? I must go to the carnival. This is very weird so far. Mission gained. Go to the f fun fair. Okay. Oh my god, what the hell's going on? Well, there we have it. The carnival. So close yet so far. Must gain entry. Must penetrate defences of mile high railings. I mean, those railings are hardly a mile high. Need lay eggs. Well, you could always, you know, go through the main gate. The plan's so crazy, it just might work. I have no idea what's going on. I feel like I'm in a fever dream. Why am I playing this? <laughs> Hello. Greetings, ticket buffoon. My name's Jerry, but okay, sir. How can I help you today? I wish to gain entrance, Jerry of Ticket Booth. Well, do you wish to buy a ticket, sir? Nah, it's fine. I don't want to pee behind any of your rides this year. I simply wish to find a fetid hole to lay my eggs in. Okay, you definitely need to buy a ticket from us if you want to do that. Rats. How much would that cost? Two dollars. Fudge, I only have zero. Tell me, young squire. <laughs> would you accept tales, stories, and other such whimsical parables as payment? No. No, I would not. Ah, oh, shoot, I was close too. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you that creep who lives in that tent next to the playground at the park? Oh no, my cover has been blown. Look, sir. I'm only telling you this because your stench is just going to drive away customers. If I let you loiter around here uninhibited for any longer. It's Valentine's Day today. Uh, Valentine's Day? Isn't that for romantic people? <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Didn't you say that you had le eggs to lay? Or some other bizarre drivel to that effect? Surely you have a mate of some kind. If you're getting ready to lay eggs... Nah, I'm a loner. Well, that explains why you live so close to the woods. That's a real shame about the loner thing. Because the promotion we have on for Valentine's Day would have really come in handy. What promotion? Well... Valentine's Day is a day for people who are, you know, in love. Love? What on God's green earth is that? Love is, well... <laughs> Love is what happens when two grown-ups start craving more than just business handshakes and platonic ice cream breaks. Love makes two people want to go on romantic ice cream dates and drink all kinds of exotic elixirs and nectars together. When two grown-ups are in love, they make joint bank accounts together and go to the movies together to feed popcorn kernels uh, to the rats and cockroaches there. And then one day, if you're lucky, your partner will take the kids away forever and go and marry Steve, the guy in your accounting firm who works in the same cubicle as you but makes 6% more per year than you and you can finally have a good night's sleep. That's love. My scary friend. Speaking of which, we have a promotion on today, just for Valentine's Day. Two tickets for the price of one, for couples who are in love. If you can somehow convince someone to bring you here, you can, I, I don't know, force them to pay you in like a parasite. Granted, it'll take a real B2 mission acquired. Oh, God! Must toast, mate! Okay! Uh, 
Go do that! Away from here! Um, okay, me go now. You just see Mr. Jerry Ticket, I'll be back with a hot babe. I shall I ask Jerry? <laughs> I will call the cops! Oh god, what have I done? Scuttle the way. Oh. Can I not marry Jerry now? I have no idea what's going on, guys. Chapter 1, the fun fair date. So I've got to get a date to the fun fair for them to pay me to go to the fun fair for me to lay eggs in the fun fair. Oh my god, is this my tent? Ah, tent, sweet tent. That's a, that actually looks quite comfortable. To find a well-functioning member of the society to latch onto like a parasite, you'll have to leave your tent, you know. Um, great stuff. Let's go lay these eggs. Brilliant. Hello, doggo. Friendly reminder. You can bring up the main menu at any point, including during dialogue. This allows you to tweak options. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doggo. What the F was that? Um, leave your tent. I can give up on my love quest already. Let's leave. Um, to the park, playground, uptown, dial town. Uptown girl. Let's go there. See who's over here then, boys. Oh, hello. Ah, uptown, dial town. Home of everything and everyone. Not cool enough to be in downtown, dial town. Uh, so, what now? We can go to... We can summon a local hobo. We can talk to a local bystander. Um, let's get a local... Uh, bystander. Oh, hello. Oh, my God, he's called Mikey. Um, how do you do, green partner? The name's Mikey, which is short for a... Uh, actually, scratch that. Mikey works just fine. Um, hey, my name's Dorco. Nice to meet you. Well, pleased to make your acquaintance, partner. So, what can I do for you on this fine spring afternoon? Um, can you take me to the fun fair, please? Oh, shucks, partner. I would, don't get me wrong. But, alas, I'm actually on my way to a book signing. You're looking at Dialtown's newest mem uh, best-selling writer. That's fine, man. I was merely trying to use you as for a free ticket. Basically, I'm trying to scam a sucker into paying me into the fun fair. Uh, I'm just a sponge, you see. Mere like and pond scum. Well, now, ain't that a coinky dink? All of my best sellers happen to be about parasites of all kinds. You won't find a man who's more about paras parasitism uh, in all of Dial Town, partner. Speaking of, let me know what I can do for you, because any longer, and I'll be running tardy. Um. Um. So if you're into parasites, are you into me? Well, no offense, but I find you mildly upsetting to gawk at. Not taken. I get that a lot. So if you happen to say, uh, happen to have say a few tapeworms wriggling around and all that good of yours, um, give me a call. If you do, there might be some free isopod grub in it for you. It's kind of edible. What kind of creature do you take me for, huh? <laughs> you look like you'd probably eat what I have in my bag. You're probably right. I would. Is it kibble? Can I have some? Call me later and find out, partner. For now, is that all? Um, give me a parasite fact. You know, there's a whole world of screwed up critters out there, and I love all of it. You know... There's a critter out there, a little isopod called the Tonglouse, that lives in the ocean. Oh, I've seen this, guys. It crawls into a fish's mouth, rips off the fish's tongue, and becomes its new tongue. Yeah. I know about that. 
That's thanks for the fact. My insides feel itchy now. Anytime, partner. Uh, bye then. Right on then. Sign or partner. Uh, can I go to go get a hobo? Hobo of Dial Town, I summon thee. Oh, it's Doggo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you, kid. The name's Hounds. You need something? Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm new. You new around here? New? Pal, I'm the oldest thing alive. Uh, even older like a dinosaur? Okay. Counting dead things is like cheating and stuff. But yeah, I'm older than pretty much every dinosaur I've met. Yeah, thing is, I'm kind of like God and stuff. I created everything around you right now and farted out the cosmos and the stars. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal actually. Uh, why are you homeless then? You look like a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> Those things aren't mutually exclusive, exclusive, little buddy. So if you're God, then how did you end up creating everything? You ever like leave a takeout box in the corner of your room and forget to bin the box, only to find a new species evolve from the remains of your chicken Thai curry from last month? <laughs> Kick me, I'm God. Oh my God. The world is my takeout box, and I'm the hungover dude gazing upon the infinite possibility in disgust and awe. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Um, can you pay me into the fun fair, God? God, how much would that even cost? One, maybe even two dollars. Do I look like I have two dollars right now? Um. Don, I guess that explains why you're a smelly hobo, dog. <laughs> yeah, that, and I'm just too stubborn to live anywhere that I didn't create myself. That's true. <laughs> if he was God, he could have made himself a, a castle or something, a palace. But if you're God, didn't you create everywhere? Well, plants, trees and stuff. Anywhere outside? Yeah, I can take credit for that, sure. Buildings? Concrete? To know what you onions are doing with rock, but it's blasphemy, and I don't care for much of it at all. But you sleep on a street. There's hardly more trees, plants on this street than in, let's say, the park. You ever tried to lie down at the park? I swear, the bench there is the only human length surface area not covered in you syringes. You know I'm right. Plus, concrete aside, there's dumpsters oh plenty around here. Free food whenever you feel like it. Long gone are the days where cavemen have to hunt squirrels with stone crossbows whenever they get peckish. Raccoons have already figured this out, by the way, and literally just scurry around and eat trash all day. Yeah, they're officially my chosen people now. You guys could learn a thing or two from those uh, little stripy poos. Hmm, noted. Um, punch God. <laughs> you fool! I'm a God! You can... How can you kill a God? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? I... Okay, I appear to have just pooed myself. <laughs> you win this round, green one. Oh my god, what the heck? Um. Okay. Bye. What's the rush? Um, you're creeping me out a bit. Um. Uh, I'm merely grown tired of you. <laughs> Fair. Okay, ciao. Feel bad now, guys. Open menu. What's this? Save your game. Uh, break. Back to the slaughter. Options and leave. Let's quickly save. Oh my god, there's loads of files. I'm gonna leave. What would you like? Oh, what did I just do? Oh, sorry. Um, 
We could go to down downtown Doyle Town, cinema, bank, tent, park, sneak into the subway. Um, let me go to the cinema. I want to see what's in there. What movie's been played? What would you like to do now? Summon an employee. Oliver. Oh my god, it's that tree. Hang on, just a jiffy. Gotta do a voice for Oliver. Green skin, five, no, six nipples. Your head, made from stitched together flesh. Or perhaps a skillful combination of burlap and levers. Can I? Can I feel your head? Um. Okay, but be gentle. I'm delicate. Don't worry, honey. I can be as smooth as an infant's... Sick. Um, a little bit disturbed. Hey, look. I know this is a sudden situation, but you know what? You know it's Valentine's Day today, right? Uh, I'm aware, yes. Oh, I think Oliver likes me. Well, I was just wondering. Would you like to perhaps, you know, go on a date with me tonight? Oh, that was sudden. Well, duh. I'm surprised. I did not see this eventually coming. I didn't. I didn't. This is an awfully common event. This isn't an awfully common event. Give me one reason why I wouldn't want to ask you out. Uh, I've got about six reasons. They're all nipples. <laughs> and they're all green. I asked you for a reason. I wouldn't ask you out, not for six perks for doing so. Uh, you like my nipples? Yeah, they're freaky. Oh my god. Groovy even. Groovy. So, how about it? Uh, yeah, let's go. Time me now. Stellar! Now, I'm not dead set on this happening in any particular way. Fun fair! Aw, oh, man. You want to go to the fun fair with me? Gnarly! I haven't been there in forever. I need, the, I need to state this for legal reasons. <laughs> this might be less of a purely romantic engagement. And more of me laying my eggs at the fun fair kind of agreement. Wait, you're... Are you an egg layer? I certainly hope I am. I'm not emotionally ready to give birth to puppies. Dude! I mean, I love puppies as much as the next fella too, but... Whoa! I can't believe I... Okay, look. I'll offer you a deal. I'm kind of working on a movie right now. See, this place ain't doing so groovy right now on account of a few disturbing rumors about the building. But I'm hoping that producing a film here in Dialtown and then hosting some sort of gnarly premiere uh, that blow the lid off uh, how gnarly this place truly is. And you know, save the business most importantly. Having footage of genuine egg laying, one that takes place right here in town, no less why. I could see this movie doing really well. You want me to lay eggs on camera? Yeah, alright. Maybe it does sound uh, like a lot. But you'd be doing us a major solid. Plus, those eggs have to be laid anyway, right? This is like s symbiosis and junk. Um, well, I am kind of broke at the moment. Groovy. So this couldn't be more simple. You need someone to take you, and I need a performer. We can kill two condors with one trident. Um, I could say no. It is creepy. Um, okay. Sure. Groovy. That's what I like to hear. I need to get in the. Uh, I need to go and lay my eggs, guys. Okay. Alright, so, thing is, I've got a little more left uh, time left on the clock. Okay. How long, Oliver? Precisely four minutes. 
Okay, that's not long. How will I occupy myself for four whole minutes? Well, you can always take a quick look around, see what the cinema has to offer. We run a tight ship here, and it's all the tighter for being stuck together by the mystery adhesive this place seems to secrete. This is an extraordinary sticky premises, yes. Okay. Let's go and walk around then, guys. Oh my! Do you have gills? Um. Sure, why not? Whoa! That's gnarly! I've always wanted to breathe underwater. Just hanging out with the fish and, and stuff. And or surprise deep sea divers stuck in nearby cages and sharks. Or the occasional corpse if you choose the wrong river to play around in, I guess. But hey! Company is company, decomposing or not. Okay, get to know the place. I'll meet you outside in four minutes. Okay, let's go then. Aw, oh, man. I'm digging this crazy slang. Catch you on the tan, dog man. Pardon? Dog man? Excuse me? Movies this way. I don't care for this place very much. Why is that dinner writer? Okay, so like, this place is obviously incredibly haunted. Yes, it is extraordinarily haunted. Now, nah, man, what makes you think that? Look. The walls are bleeding. Okay, we don't know for, the fa for a fact that it's blood. <laughs> it could be ketchup for all we know. Do you consider the wall seeping ketchup for its, for its pores? Honestly, uh, any less abnormal? But it could be some kind of jam or nectar too. None of those are normal substances for a movie theatre wall to secrete. Well, whatever it is, there's only one way to find out. Oh, please don't. <laughs> I'm begging you. Don't lick that. Worry not, it could be jam. Wall jam is not good jam. I've made my mind up. Okay, it is blood. <laughs> but it's not my blood, so I care very little. In fact, I'm relieved. It's blood, though. Yeah, but it's not mine, so, uh... Why should I care if it hasn't been stolen from my body? Perhaps I should have known. It's the wrong colour anyway. You really don't get this, do you? What I don't get is why I shouldn't go just go somewhere else. You know, to shut you up. Fine, fine. Besides, I'm sure there's hardly anything here more unsettling. Okay. What the F? Uh, children. Two of them. They're just staring right at you. Yeah, kids do that. I don't like their energy. They're evil, Dorco. Evil! You want to attempt communication? I don't speak Latin, nor crayon. Wait, do kids speak Spanish? These particular ones might just speak the same tongue as you and me. Whoa, no way. Say something to them. Hey, children! Oi! How would you like to how would you like to clean my tent? Why is this always your go-to? Come play with us. Uh, it's the shining guys with the twins. Come play with us, Danny, forever and ever. Uh, let's get that all. No, no, let's hear them out. What game do you want to play, dear children? I don't know, a word search maybe? Sorry, no can do. I'm kind of illiterate. <laughs> Feel free to complete it on your own, though. Okay, we understand thoroughly. <laughs> Have a nice day. What is this game? Huh. I can't... I had no idea kids nowadays could gush and blur like that. <laughs> can we please just leave this accursed place? Fine, fine. I reckon a good four minutes has passed anyhow. Okay. Hello, Oliver. Hey, you pal. Uh, you were gone for a good six minutes. Figured you might uh, just skedaddled, so to speak. So, how do you find the place? Um, stickier than my tent. Didn't know that was possible. Yeah, 
My boss reckons that a joint can only get so sticky. Me? I think it's a black, like a black hole. How so? Well, you know how black holes are so strong that no light can escape them? Hence they appear invisible to s telescopes? No, but go on. I reckon that if a place was sticky enough, you'd just like get stuck forever and nobody would find out. So basically the only way to find out how sticky the place is would be to touch it, trapping you and preventing others from finding out how sticky the place truly is. I call it the Oliver Uncertainty Principle of Stickiness. Uh, you're full of ideas, aren't you? Mostly about stickiness, grime and filth, yes siree. Anyway, I was wondering if you wanted to get going. The way I figure it, the sooner we get this footage done, the more time we'll have to enjoy ourselves. Um, uh, let's go. Oh, I see. Well, if you're in that much of a rush, I suppose we could get right to the eggling. I won't hold you any up any longer than necessary. Good. Anyway, let's just get going. We can continue chatting on the way there. Okay. Oh, I'm on the subway. You know, I'm aware of the Funfair's two-for-one ticket thing going on today, but I sincere sincerely doubt you're al allowed to just piggyback onto my subway ticket. <laughs> Unlike the Funfair, this concrete jungle holds no love in its pores. Just damp, which I doubt can even be considered much of an emotion at all. Um, you sure? I feel quite damp right now. Uh, please, if there's any point paying for a ticket. True. Have you ever seen a human down here in uniform? No, I mean... I bought my ticket from the machine, granted. This is truly a lawless subterranean frontier. Anyway, thanks for agreeing to do this, by the way. I know you're benefiting from this too, but believe me, you're doing us a major solid. Uh, it's my pleasure, Olive Man. Us? Who's this us? Oh, sorry. I met my boss, Mr. Dickens. Mr. Dickens? Oh, he's my boss. Yeah, he owns the cinema I work at and always has. He's, uh, he's a top-notch guy, a real class act. Old British chap, full of vitality. He built the very cinema I work at back in the 1960s as a, as a young entrepreneur. Are you close to him? I sure as heck am, Daddy-o. I was only a starry-eyed lad, a mere man, manling when I got my job at the cinema. Taught me everything I know about being a man. I don't understand. Right, right. You haven't met Mr. Dickens. He has impeccable style, you know. Wears his old suits, uses old British words and terms, always keeps a level head. But you said you learned everything from him, right? Right. But you don't talk like a pirate, nor constantly mention fish and chips. Well, no, see, Mr. Dickens' last piece of advice for me was... There's nothing better for a man to do than be an individual. Tally-ho! Did you add to the in the tally-ho? Or did he actually say it like that? Say it like that, sorry. I, 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 that was supposed to be me talking. I, I don't remember. Anyway, I have to find my own path, wear my own clothes, use my own updated, da, da, uh, updated slang, daddy-o. When we get back, I'll definitely introduce the two of you to each other. In a way, you kind of remind me of him, uh, with the whole doing your own thing, regardless of others laughing or being repulsed by you mentality you've got going on. Uh, people laugh at me? No, no, what I meant was... I'm shifting you, man. I know people think I'm repulsive. Frankly, I'm amazed that you don't. Really? Why on earth would I? Would I? Oh, the usual reasons. I'm not exactly prime rib, you know. Green skin, a few too many nipples, stitched together fleshy phone head. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that, actually. No, I was nowhere near phone Kennedy on the date of... <laughs> My nipples can only shoot so far, I... <laughs> That's an absolutely riveting diversion, but no, I meant... 
Your phone head. Did you contract it yourself? Construct it? That's quite a personal question. I know, I know. I should know better to ask, but... I've never seen someone so different before. It's a custom, I guess you could say. Huh. I don't know if you built it yourself, per se, but how far back was the uh, bell mechanism placed relative to the vestigial cord adapter? That's quite a specific question. Bold of you to assume I don't understand any of those fancy scamancy words. Sorry, I guess I'm just technically minded. Always enjoy dismantling stuff, then putting them back together. Rare for an artist, I suppose, which is why Mr. Dickens is such use for me. I know how to load a uh, reel into our machines, and I ought to, uh, and what I what ought to be inside it. Hell, I'm the only one big burfer let. Uh, I'm the only one big burfer let's perform maintenance on her. She's our movie projector, and boy, is she temperamental. So Dickens keeps you busy. Well, yeah, but that's not how it's gotta be when you work with the public, I suppose. Come on, Oliver, let's just go to the fun house, please. I'm getting bored now. Oh, there we go. I think we're near the outskirts of town. You ready to get off? Okay, we're here. Sup, Jerry? Ticket Jerry! No! Yes! A deal is a deal, you festive gate blocker. I win. Why did you? How did you? I didn't think you'd actually. Uh, of course. Of course. It'll be Oliver of all people. I reiterate. Sup, Jerry? Oliver? Why? Why would you? I don't get what you're ins insinuating, Jerry. Why on earth would you take... Him here! I think the better question is, why on earth wouldn't I, dearest Jerry? Oliver, he's got green skin! I know! Isn't it gnarly? Oh, Oliver, he's got six nipples! Six for the price of two! What a bargain! His head is clearly comprised of stolen skins, all stitched together crudely. Crude? I'd like to see your needlework, ticket man. You shut up! Oliver, he only asked you here so he can lay his green egg somewhere on the funfair grounds. Oh, I know. And I'm totally into it too. I even brought a camera so I can film it. And it's awe inspiring ooze tacular to gravity. <laughs> Dear Lord. Of course. Of course, it'll be Oliver of all people who'd be into this. What can I say, Jerry? It's hip uh, to F monsters. Yeah, Jerry. Now, how about two tickets for me and my adoring talent? The tickets cough up, pretty boy. Oh, fine, that'll be two dollars then. Alright, Darko. You ready to go inside? Um, Yes, I'm ready. Ladies first then. Hello. Oh man, I haven't been here in forever. Uh, because of the danger. What? Heck no! Being smushed by a derailed mouse cart and scraped off the ground as a red pancake is a dream of mine. When I get old, take me here. The universe will take care of the rest. So, where do you wanna, want me to stand? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, for the footage. You are gonna lay your eggs, right? Well, not now, Oliver. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh... Alright, how about now? What? Out in the open? Among the common rabble? I think not, pervert. Sorry, sorry. 
I just presume since you're like heavily pregnant and whatnot. Okay, how about this? Let's say we go frolic and have some fun. And then you let me know when everything's groovy and you want to take the shot. That sounds quite agreeable, yes. Fun, very much so, yes. What am I playing? Well, there you go. We are on the bumper carts. Get some cotton candy. We watch the fireworks together. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, here's the spot. What do you mean? This! This is the perfect spot to lay your eggs! Oh, I see. No, no, listen! Accessible location, spitting distance from the hot dog stand, just off the beaten path, enough to be avoided by civilian foot traffic. And best of all, lots of disturbed dirt for you to bury your young in order, con in order to conceal them from potential predators. Um. Do I normally lay eggs in water like a flo frog? I can't remember. Wait, are you an amphibian? Uh, I've seldom tried to drown myself, so I'm not certain. Uh, hey, that's fine. I can just pour a couple of two little bottles of cola into the mound. Then it'll be plenty aquatic. Right, then the sun bakes the soda into the mound and it'll get all sticky. How are my children to survive if they hatch already stuck to the ground? I mean, this location has other perks too. Like good lighting to film with a camera. Oh, I see what this is. You've, e you've even got the little stage light set up. Oh, come on. It's not like that. It's just, well, we did make a deal. One ticket for one filming. Come on, man. Don't get out of me. Uh, fine, fine. I'll just like... Did you get it? Every oozing second. You also got them all in the hole. Even without ample pre 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 preparation. Very impressive. Thanks, I'm a master of steering my own butt. Okay. Use of expertise? You know it, hun. I still don't understand, though. Why do you care so much about some biohazardous cinema closure? Why do you go out for all this trouble? Look, I've truly explained the basics to you already, definitely. The theatre is dying due to the haunting's rumours. But it's greater than that, really. Our cinema... Each and every cinema, in fact, is destined to go the way of the dodo at this rate. Right? All cinemas? What makes you say that? The same reason that video rental stores and the creepy mustachio dude selling bootleg VHS tapes door to door died out. Spinny disc players? What? No! The internet! Isn't that the cat meme database? Yeah, but now they've got videos. We've got entire sites dedicated just to showing movies. And with directors beginning to put their movies straight up on there, without even considering physical theaters. Well, why would people leave their own familiar huddles when they could just watch the same movie even cheaper online? So why do you care? This just sounds like advancement evolution. It's more convenient for everyone. It's not like that. The cinema employs me and Mr. Dickens. You can just get a job on one of those sites. You said it yourself. You're technically minded. You'd excel at it. It's not me that I'm worried about. It's Mr. Dickens. He's old. Set in his ways. He's extraordinarily savvy at running a physical business. But I know he wouldn't bridge the gap. The physical silver screen is all he knows. Truth is, as much as I love the cinema, it's Mr. Dickens that I feel truly in debt to. He's given me so much, taught me so much, he's... He's like a father to me. 
Having a cinema oh, has, has always been his dream from when he was my age. It, if his dream dies, a part of him does too. I can't allow that to happen. Not sitting down anyway. I know we can get people to come back if we can release something truly engaging. Something new. Something people can't find any anywhere else. I know people would love to hear a new story, even if it's weird. If it's, uh, if it's one they can connect with. Look, this footage. I'm not asking you to do this for me. I'm asking you to do this for Mr. Dickens and his dream. I know it's a lot to ask to allow yourself to become vulnerable before a whole town of people who spurned you. All this man, uh, all for a man you've never even met. But maybe you can understand the importance of his dreams like I do. Maybe you'll do it for me. Um, Root diverging. I'll accept it. You can use the footage. Dude, I... Darko, you have no idea how gnarly it is to... How happy that... Thank you, sincerely. This footage, it's one of a kind. Hell, this footage alone tells a story that I don't think anyone has ever seen before. Pity it's so short, though. Uh, if it was the whole movie, I'd be set, content-wise. But alas, movie needs to be 40 minutes or longer to even qualify as a feature-length film. I don't know if an indie short film would drag the crowds that a feature-length movie would. Okay, what, do you want to film more stuff? Um. Okay, so this is a big thing to ask, but... What if you and I got more footage tomorrow, you know? Of you! Okay, what are we doing? I know it sounds strange, but... The footage of you uh, that I just got is easily the freshest thing I've ever filmed. It's different, that's for sure. Okay. You think people want to see more of me? Absolutely! It's fine if you're not sure yet. You can give me your answer tomorrow. And I'd be honored if you were willing, though. Anyway, you fine to make your own way home? I, can, I can't walk. I've got five green bowling balls out of my rear end, Oliver. Far much, far too much uh, poo trauma, uh, bum trauma. <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay, idea. How about we borrow this discarded bike over there? I pedal and you ride in the basket. That sounds agreeable, yes. Okay. Are we done? See you in the full game. And there you go, guys. That was the demo of Doyle Town. And I am very disturbed, very confused, and... Yeah. I'm speechless. Uh, that, that, that was an experience. That was an experience, guys. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you were interested in Doyle Town, uh, the link will be in the description if you guys enjoy uh, six green six-nippled men laying eggs at a fun fair. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Lots of love. I'm going to have a therapy session now, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>